Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Curious Kingdom. Today we are recapping sci-fi film Time Trap. In a remote Texan town, Jason Hopper, a professor of archaeology, is diligently pursuing the trail of the missing hippies from the 1970s. While exploring the rugged mountainous terrain, he comes across a cave entrance where he encounters a motionless cowboy, giving the impression of being frozen in time. Despite calling out to the cowboy inside, Hopper receives no response. Curiosity pushes him to approach the cowboy cautiously, only to notice that the cowboy is holding a gun, indicating potential danger. Realizing the risk involved, Hopper decides to exit the cave and make his way back to town. During his return, he contacts Jackie, one of his teaching assistants, informing her that he has found the van but no sign of the hippies. Additionally, he asks Jackie to prepare a climbing pack for him discreetly, ensuring that Taylor, his other assistant and Jackie's best friend, remains unaware of his upcoming expedition. Upon reaching home, Hopper discovers Jackie and Taylor waiting for him, disappointed that Jackie shared details of his planned expedition with Taylor. Hopper quickly informs them of a change in plans, insisting on embarking on the search for the missing hippies alone, despite Taylor's offer to accompany him. The following day, Hopper drives to the research area to resume his quest. As he sits in his car, an old photograph of a couple with their young daughter catches his eye from the dashboard. Returning to the entrance of the cave, he finds the suspended cowboy still in the same position. Intrigued, he ventures deeper into the cave and encounters a mysterious wall of moisture. Fascinated by this phenomenon, he pushes forward, crossing the wall. Two days later, Taylor knocks on Jackie's door and urges her to join him in searching for Hopper. Jackie agrees, but expresses her reluctance to hike, sensing potential danger. She suggests bringing Kara, a fellow student with a crush on Taylor, who has access to her dad's jeep. However, Taylor dismisses the idea. Unperturbed, Jackie uses Taylor's phone to contact Kara. Kara, busy helping her sister Veeves with a school project, receives the call. Taylor then presents Kara with a better option to help Veeves achieve an on the project, on the condition that Kara brings her dad's 4x4 Jeep. Kara promptly agrees. And inside the car, Taylor explains their upcoming weekend adventure to both Kara and Veeves. Taylor shares the story of their mentor, Professor Hopper, who has become fixated on finding the missing hippies from the 1970s. He mentions that the hippies were under the influence of hallucinogenic mushrooms and embarked on a quest to find the Fountain of Youth, never returning. Suddenly, Veeves recalls her friend Furby and insists on bringing him along, much to Kara's disappointment, who describes him as an odd kid with an unusual odor. With Furby now part of the group, they encounter irritations as he immediately develops a crush on Jackie during their journey. Furby distributes action cameras to everyone, eager to capture every moment of their adventure. They eventually arrive at Hopper's search area and discover an old hippie van from the 70s. Taylor finds an old photograph of a family with a note on the back, reading the Hoppers, May 1970. Jackie is surprised that Hopper didn't mention it, while Taylor concludes that Hopper's real motive was not searching for the missing hippies in the Fountain of Youth, but rather finding his own missing parents. Soon after, Furby accidentally stumbles upon a rope lying on the ground. The group follows the rope, which leads them to a cave. Inside the cave, Jackie makes a crucial discovery. The end of the rope is severed before a steep descent. Taylor dismisses it as Hopper's rope due to its age. Nevertheless, the group decides to descend further into the cave system. Furby remains behind as a lookout, due to his fear of spiders and crickets, and Taylor hands him a radio for communication. Jackie and Veeves are the first to rappel down the cave descent, followed by Taylor and Kara. As Kara notices the same mysterious wall Hopper encountered at the cave entrance two days prior, she experiences a flashback. Hopper crosses the mysterious wall and continues following the suspended cowboy. Suddenly, he hears loud, incomprehensible noises, a man growling and a girl screaming. Overwhelmed by fear, Hopper hastily retreats to the cave entrance. To his astonishment, the sky has already darkened, despite entering the cave just minutes ago in the morning. Hopper rushes back to his car, which appears rusty and overgrown with vegetation, as if it has been abandoned for a long time. While searching the surroundings, he discovers an old 4x4 Jeep identical to Harris's car. Inside the Jeep, he finds a familiar bag that belongs to Jackie. Anxiously, he calls out her name, but receives no response. Determined, Hopper decides to return to the cave armed with lead flares, hoping to find Jackie and Taylor within. Jackie and Veeves continue their investigation, but their progress is interrupted when they hear disembodied voices in the distance. Frightened, they urge Taylor and Kara to retreat. Initially hesitant, Taylor eventually agrees, and they begin their ascent. Jackie volunteers to be the first one to climb back up. But halfway through, her rope suddenly snaps, causing her to fall onto Taylor and resulting in a leg injury for Jackie and a broken hand for Taylor. 
Taylor, suspecting that Furby intentionally cut the rope out of jealousy, calls him on the radio repeatedly but receives no response. Kara and Veebs also attempt to reach Furby through the radio but are met with silence. The group engages in a heated argument about how they can ascend without a rope, with Kara being suggested to climb up free. Suddenly, they hear a loud thud, prompting Taylor to grab the radio and call Furby once again, but to no avail. Beeves grows increasingly anxious. As Taylor continues to call Furby on the radio, another voice chimes in, leading Taylor to believe it's Hopper. A distorted voice on the other end pleads for help, causing Taylor to ask if it's Hopper. The voice identifies itself as Furby, but the group finds it hard to believe. Consequently, Taylor, Veeves, and Kara decide to investigate. They reach a tunnel within a cave and witness a peculiar and mysterious light dancing above the surface. Kara climbs up and is shocked to discover Furby's lifeless body on the other side of the rock. She requests that Taylor bring Veeves to the other room to shield her from the sight of Furby's demise. However, the group encounters Jackie crawling towards them, prompting them to retreat together. Taylor, noticing the body, instructs Veeves and Jackie to stay back. Nevertheless, Veeves overhears Taylor and Kara's conversation and uses her camera to observe what's happening on the other side of the rock. Ultimately, the group learns that Furby fell due to a severed rope, leading to a fatal neck injury from the fall. Once again, they find themselves perplexed as to who could have cut Furby's rope. Taylor discovers that Furby's camera is still recording and suggests watching the footage that led up to Furby's demise. The recording unveils Furby's search for the group after receiving no communication from them via radio for half an hour since their descent into the cave. Furby discovers a cave, a rope, and a jeep, all of which point to Hopper's expedition. He also comes across a journal belonging to Hopper's father, revealing his father's obsession with finding the Fountain of Youth in the 70s. The journal contains various accounts and drawings by Spanish conquistadors attempting to locate a cave believed to contain miraculous healing waters, as described by the natives. According to the journal, the queen had dispatched these expeditions to find the water and bring back a vial for her dying husband. However, all these expeditions ended in failure, with the last one taking place near their town. The footage then shows Furby waiting for the group until midnight. He then reads the journal again and discovers that Hopper's father began searching for the cave when Hopper's sister fell ill. The following morning, Furby expresses his frustrations on camera. The group is bewildered by how quickly time seems to have passed, believing they have been inside the cave for only an hour. The recording begins again, this time already indicating that it's Tuesday. Furby emotionally bids farewell to his mother and the rest of the group before descending into the cave he had discovered earlier. As he descends using the rope tied to the rock, he witnesses rapid flashing lights in the sky before the rope suddenly snaps, causing him to fall to his death. The group becomes embroiled in a desperate and heated argument about the time discrepancy between them and the surface. It becomes evident that time behaves differently within the cave. Eventually, they decide that Kara should climb up the cave tunnel and reach the surface. Eves attaches a camera to Kara, and Taylor provides her with a GPS beacon for communication from anywhere in the world. Upon reaching the surface, Kara is taken aback by the starkly different environment compared to the one they came from. The landscape is desolate, comprised solely of rock formations and the air is thick and challenging to breathe. Kara attempts to find a signal for the GPS beacon but instead spots a massive triangular spaceship hovering on the horizon amidst a thick wall of dust resembling a sandstorm. Alarmed, she hastily descends back into the cave to inform Taylor, Veeves, and Jackie. The group, however, struggles to believe Kara's account due to their own limited perception. They reluctantly agree to watch the footage from her camera. Taylor also shares his own camera footage, which leads to further confusion regarding the time difference between the two recordings. Finally, a spark of realization ignites within Taylor's mind as he theorizes that time within the cave passes at a different rate compared to the surface. He concludes that it wasn't a person who severed Furby's rope, but rather the friction caused by the rapid passage of time. Additionally, Taylor deduces that the flashing light Furby witnessed before falling was, in fact, the sun rising and setting rapidly. Understanding that time stops within the cave, Jackie suggests that they may be inside the fabled fountain of youth. As the group ponders the situation, Kara requests a moment of rest. Taylor suddenly realizes that Furby was on their side when he fell and that his radio wasn't crushed, contrary to how they found him lying face down. Intrigued, the group continues watching the remaining footage, discovering that Furby was still alive after his fall and had been the one Taylor was conversing with via the radio. The recording also reveals that Furby encountered a prehistoric man who ultimately killed him. Motivated by curiosity, Kara decides to ascend the tunnel again, while Veeves notices something significant in Furby's footage. She discerns that the flashing lights Furby witnessed represented entire seasons passing swiftly on the surface. This realization explains the stark differences Kara encountered when she first climbed up. Suddenly, a bright object falls down the cave tunnel, transforming into a ladder. 
Kara begins climbing up, but she is met by a towering, humanoid figure. Filled with trepidation, she hastily descends back down. The humanoid reaches the cave surface and is immediately attacked by a caveman. The two engage in a struggle, with the humanoid subduing the caveman using a futuristic collar chain. The group escapes the scene, navigating through a series of cave passages, momentarily losing sight of the humanoid. They enter another cave and discover the lifeless body of a woman on the ground, whom Jackie recognizes as Hopper's mother from the old photos. A few feet away, Taylor finds Hopper's deceased father. They also come across a group of cavemen surrounding the lifeless body of a cowboy. Attempting to flee, the group attracts the attention of the cavemen. As the girls run for their lives, Taylor stays behind to confront the cavemen but quickly becomes overwhelmed and loses consciousness. The remaining three hide while the cavemen continue their pursuit. Kara, sensing that they have eluded the cavemen, decides to check on Taylor's condition. To his relief, she finds Taylor alive on the ground. Suddenly, the humanoid arrives on the scene. Kara, frightened and angry, attempts to protect Taylor from the humanoid's perceived threat. However, the humanoid ignores them, instead drawing water from a pool across the room. The humanoid walks out of the cave but abruptly halts and drags Taylor's lifeless body into the pool of water. The cavemen return and attack the humanoid, while Taylor miraculously comes back to life. The humanoid engages in a fierce battle with the cavemen but is eventually overwhelmed. When a caveman removes the humanoid's helmet, the fight continues, and the outnumbered humanoid emerges victorious. In his dying moments, the humanoid uses his last breaths to show the group several media clips that shed light on their disappearance. The videos reveal that thousands of years have passed on the surface, and humans are now residing in outer space. Witnessing the events that unfolded on the surface during their absence, the group is left with a crucial decision to make, whether to find a way out of the cave or remain there indefinitely. Taylor notices a backpack that he recognizes as Hopper's and decides to search for him, instructing the others to retrieve Furby's body. Along the way, Taylor takes the pistol belonging to the suspended cowboy. He comes across the lead flares that Hopper had dropped on his path and continues through a series of cave paintings depicting enigmatic events from the past. Suddenly, he encounters a cave child tending to injured or dead cavemen by pouring water on their wounds. Taylor walks past the cavemen and finds Hopper wounded on the ground near another time wall. Curious, Taylor peeks through the other side of the time barrier and witnesses a legion of conquistadors battling with cavemen for control of a waterfall. Hopper reveals to Taylor that the little girl inside the time trap is his sister and that they have finally found the Fountain of Youth. Jackie urges Taylor to return, but he is determined to save Hopper. However, Hopper insists that Taylor should go and save the others because he knows he won't make it. Taylor leaves the pistol with Hopper to buy them some time. Meanwhile, the group places Furby's body into the healing pool, and miraculously, Jackie and the others start to recover from their injuries. As the group hears gunshots from Hopper's location, it becomes apparent that Hopper is fighting against the newly revived cavemen. They quickly make their escape, utilizing the ladder provided by the humanoid. However, the cavemen catch up to them. Kara, the first to climb, is surprised to find a water portal at the top instead of the surface outside. In a moment of desperation, she touches the water and is immediately grabbed by alien-like hands. Taylor manages to grab hold of Kara as she screams in fear, but a caveman deactivates the ladder, causing everyone to fall. Kara is pulled up through the water portal, where time passes a thousand times faster than in the cave. The alien beings offer her a water breather before pulling her up further. Taylor, Veeves, and Kara appear to be falling in suspended animation until three futuristic ropes emerge from the portal, latching onto them and preventing them from falling. After a period of time spent in the accelerated time of the portal, Kara re-emerges and pulls everyone through. Four ropes extend from the portal, perplexing the cavemen as they stretch across the cave tunnels. Shortly after, Furby awakens in another pool of water, having been revived by the healing properties. Hopper also regains consciousness, alongside his reunited family, including his parents and his little sister. Jackie, Veeves, and Kara soon join them and explain that they are currently inside a space station. Hopper, still dazed and confused, witnesses the reunion of his family and expresses his astonishment. Taylor assures him that they have a lot to discuss. The scene concludes with the camera panning beneath the space station, which hovers above a planet. That's all for today folks. Like, share and subscribe for more such content. Curious Knight signing off. Stay safe stay curious.